from Lightning Strikes Bowling Center in Trustville, Alabama, near Birmingham, ESPN presents live coverage of the Denny's PBA Tour. It's the 2006 Jackson Hewitt Tax Service Classic. It's Dave Bryan alongside Randy Peterson, along with four bowlers bidding for $40,000 and a one-year tour exemption. Now they're ready to roll. Last season's U.S. Open champion, he holds six career tour titles from Flower Mound, Texas, Chris Barnes. Chris Barnes is back after missing a month of competition due to a back injury. Right there! Since then, he's been working diligently to get back to championship form, and today he looks to win for the first time since last season's U.S. Open. He has four career Denny's PBA Tour titles. Today he makes his first TV Finals of the season. From Lake Worth, Florida, Steve Wilson. All season long, Steve has been questioning his ability to compete on tour. Yeah. Oh, what a difference a week makes. His ball reaction is back, and with that, some newfound confidence. The reigning PBA Player of the Year, he holds six career tour titles. Today he looks to defend his Birmingham Classic title from Terrytown, New York, Patrick Allen. PA is proving that last season's Player of the Year honors was no fluke. With four TV appearances and a title under his belt, he's paving the way to another postseason award show. With over two and a quarter million dollars in career earnings, he sits ninth in career titles with 23 wins. PBA Hall of Famer from Alpharetta, Georgia, Brian Voss. The amazing Brian Voss at age 47, he's in his 24th season on the tour. His desire is fueled by an unconditional love of the sport. His motivation is simple, win. These are your finalists competing for the title in the 2006 Jackson Hewitt Tax Service Classic. It is the 13th time the PBA has been in the great state of Alabama. The second straight year, Lightning Strikes has hosted a PBA event. A year ago, Patrick Allen won the second of his back-to-back -back titles, setting himself up for Player of the Year honors. Ran as we set the brackets, we see PA is back to defend his title. Well, it's never been done before where we went four sweeps in the round of eight, but it almost happened this week. Chris Barnes takes on Patrick Allen. Brian Voss takes on Steve Wilson. The only game lost was right here when Patrick Allen lost the first game to Mika when Mika shot 276 at him. All right, we'll set. We'll talk to our first two bowlers for semifinal. First, Chris Barnes. Five events, Chris. The back injury in the first half cost you. Now that you're back on TV, how would you best describe that recovery process? Uh, well, long. <laughs> You know, you get impatient, you think about a lot of things. Uh, you look back at guys like Mark Baker, great players, and, and it put them out of business. Uh, and uh, so it was pretty scary for a while. Uh, I'm happy to be back. It's great to be back in Alabama, and I'm, and I'm where I want to be on Sunday. Good luck, thanks. Stevie, pondered retirement. You told us last night that there are times you've even thought about leaving the sport. Now that you're back on TV, what are your feelings? Uh, my feelings today, I mean, they, I'm just looking forward to the uh, competition today, and uh, I just want to win. I mean, the bottom line is you have to win out here to be successful, and that's what I'm here for. Thanks for your time. First ever matchup head-to-head -head ready on TV between these two, Steve Wilson and Chris Barnes, and on the oil, 35 feet. 35 feet, cheetah pattern, eight 300 games bowl this week. It's our shortest pattern with a lot of friction down the lane. It's also our highest scoring pattern. What that means is only 35 feet, you've got a lot of hook down the lane, but what makes this condition so scorable is the friction, the outside part of the lane. So the players either played up the boards or they throw it, they threw into that dry stuff. So this week, not a problem getting it to the pocket, so Annie up and go all in. We are expecting big numbers today. Maybe the 17th ever game on TV. It's possible with this pattern conducive to high scores. Late hit on number 10. What a 
start for Steve Wilson, who Randy told us before the show today that he didn't want just to appreciate being back on TV for the first time in so long. He wants to think about business first, not just, oh, I'm back on television, isn't this great? He knows it's all about winning out here. You know, that's how you make the big money. That's how you earn exemptions. That's how you stay out here. And as far as Steve's concerned, yeah, it's nice to make the show, but he's got a lot of work to do, and his, his business isn't finished, just making it. Bringing 10 for Chris Barnes, his first shot on TV since the season opener in Tulsa. Lost in the first match, event eventually won by Tommy Jones. Long time away from the PBA Tour for Chris Barnes. Only 35 years old from the Dallas Metroplex. A difficult stretch for him with the injury. Takes care of the 10 pin, has his mark. Good start for Chris Barnes, leading us to our first Ace Hardware matchup of the day between Wilson and Barnes. Look at all the money that Chris Barnes has made in a very short period of time out here. He won the U.S. Open last season. Steve Wilson battling some confidence issues. Chris Barnes battling back injury. And some issues about winning on TV. <laughs> all 10 down the pit for Chris Barnes. Using two different bowling balls, playing identical lines. Check Steve Wilson's path to the TV show, 18th qualifier, and look at the demolition of Dino Castillo in a round of eight. Very successful and high numbers for Steve Wilson. His last title came in February of 2002. <laughs> Perfect shot there. That's when he knocked off Jason Queen. At the flagship open Erie, Pennsylvania. He also had knocked off Blaze Bedoy in the first match, 276 247. Yeah, and Steve would also like to add his name to a great list of champions who have won here in Birmingham, namely Billy Hardwick back in 1964 and Carmen Salvino in 65. Carmen Salvino, who's won 17 tour titles. Legendary PBA bowler is in the house. Great to see Carmen as usual. Another great shot for Steve Wilson. Just an amazing story, Randy, to me about how close he has come to leaving the tour. And this guy is only 37 years old, does have four titles, but frustration would be the way to describe his season so far. Yeah, the last couple of years has been real frustrating for Steve. Steve barely made it uh, last season. He qualified 37th, and we took 39. But this year has just been disastrous. His highest finish coming into this week is 39th. You saw the road to TV from Chris Barnes. And a great round of eight matches well. Blowing by Pete Weber and four. But getting back to Steve Wilson as you watch this perfect strike thrown by Chris Barnes. Dave, out here it's all about ball reaction. And, you know, Steve Wilson's kind of an in-between guy. He doesn't throw it real hard or real soft. Doesn't hook it a lot, but doesn't go real straight. He's kind of in-between in every kind of every category. And he just doesn't match up well or hasn't been matching up well. And all of a sudden this week he's seen something that he hasn't he hasn't seen in a long time, and that was his ball hooking down the lane. Great start for Chris Barnes. He told us just before the show today, Randy, how important it would be for him to have a good start. We've mentioned some struggles Chris has had on TV. One and ten in his last 11 television appearances. The one win, just one match victory as the top seed step ladder format last year's U.S. Open, almost a year ago, over Patrick Allen in the finals. He said, look, I'm going to own up to the fact on TV I've struggled. Chris Barnes, known as a slow starter, but today he's off to a great start. Late help. The scout across the deck won't tap the 10. Not good. Not good. Go fast. And we talked about Chris Barnes last night, and, and I think one of the first things that really jumps out at you is the fact that he only has six titles. Head pin goes to the sidewall. Stevie's looking for it to come off of the sidewall and get on over there into the 10. It goes in front. Here number 10, just an incredible story with Steve Wilson, whose family is back home now. In Lake Worth, Florida, near West Palm on the Atlantic coast side of Florida. Wife Sherry, daughter Sarah and Emma. Sarah is going to turn seven in a couple of weeks. They're having an early birthday party, and why not combine the kids' birthday party with watching Dad on TV? Perfect timing, right? It is nice. Sherry's been very supportive, says Steve, staying on tour, finishing out this year. All 
Fifth hand down for Steve Wilson. After an event this year in Chicago where he was on the verge of being outside the cut line, he went home and told Sherry, I'm not going to go back. That's it. Sherry said you have to finish what you started. There's still a chance you could be exempt next year. Properly motivated him to return. Play, play. It's in high. Yeah. Really saw that ball scoot at the very end of the 35 foot pattern and take off toward the head pin. Yeah, it just duck hooks down the lane. That's the friction I talked about in the oil pattern. But you could hear Chris Barnes saying lay, lay, because he knew that ball was going to go high. With the conversion here, he's only down by one. But now getting back to Steve Wilson and you know being away from home and Sherry being his rock, I mean, you know, the worst place to be is away from your family when you're pounding your head against the wall week in and week out because your bar action stinks and you can't strike. Barnes has his spare, converts the 6-10. As for Chris Barnes, because he had the time off with a back injury, opposite was true. He was home with the young twins in the Dallas area. His wife, Linda, an elite bowler, was actually competing in Slovenia, Eastern Europe, at a world championship. So Chris was Mr. Mom throughout much of the first half while he recovered from the back problem. It's been a while since Tulsa. Oh. Great start for each on this cheetah pattern. One pin match. Our first semifinal from Trustville, Alabama, just outside Birmingham. And we come back, we'll break down the field. Talk about Patrick Allen as well and BD Brian Voss. The Jackson Hewitt Tax Service Classic on ESPN is brought to you by Jackson Hewitt Tax Service. This year, let the tax experts at Jackson Hewitt help you get the biggest refund you deserve. By Dexter, where you can play with the pros. Enter to win at DexterShoe.com. By Pepsi, the official soft drink of bowling. And by Denny's, we're cooking now. Welcome back, everyone to the heart of Dixie, Trustville, Alabama, just outside Birmingham, past the midway point, exciting first semifinal. Steve Wilson, Chris Barnes, one pin separates these two fine bowlers. Sundays are for bowling. Welcome, everyone, to Birmingham. Dave Ryan, Randy Peterson, alongside with our entire crew. Glad you could join us again on this Sunday. Sundays certainly very exciting today. Now we talk about our field. We have Steve Wilson, as we mentioned, Randy, pondering retirement. A lot of pressure on Steve, trying to do well today. Ryan Voss at 47 years young. Can he still compete with some of the young guns and win again on tour? And then Chris Barnes, the back injury costing him five events earlier this season. Yeah, he strained a ligament in his lower back back in November. And the only thing that Chris could think about was what happened to PBA champion Mark Baker back in 91. He pulled his right back there. out and ended his career. I had surgery in 91 on my knee. Never, yes, never really knew yes, if I'd return. Yes. But as Chris started to improve, he started to really focus mentally on his thoughts on winning and actually preparing for the majors. Well, Barnes certainly is back. Look at the rapid improvement for Chris Barnes. First in Medford when he felt around 85%, he told us. Now, after a nice appearance in the Valley of the Sun last week, he'll at least have a top four finish here. And he says the back is about 95%. Patrick Allen certainly has good memories from here at Lightning Strikes Bowling Center of Trustville, Alabama. It was a year ago. He won the second of his back-to-back -back titles, part of a three-win season winning the Chris Schenko Player of the Year Award against Mike DeVay in the final. DeVay needed that strike. It was a winning 10 instead, and PA on the bench had a championship. Yeah, you know what, Dave, in my opinion, I think Patrick Allen is one win away from putting his name at the top of the list for the Player of the Year race. You can see what our guys did in the round of eight. Steve Wilson, it's amazing mentally what, what, you know, how you can really turn things around when you start to gain a little confidence. Steve Wilson averaged 261 en route to making his first telecast in a long time. We asked Steve last night in an interview with him, if you don't bowl, what would you do? That's way right. Ends up coming to the pocket just in time as he makes an adjustment and a move. As he flirts with the channel there, and Steve said, oh, I'd like to stay associated with bowling, maybe run a pro shop, maybe run a bowling center, maybe something completely different. I mean, literally his career, in his future, he's got a young family, is hanging the balance of today's result. Yeah, and I agree. And, you know, when talking to Steve, you can really tell that 
he, he misses his girls and, and his wife, and uh, unless he turns it around and starts making a lot of money out here, I don't think he's going to be out here much longer. Comes in high. Wow. The split gets a break, and they're all down. Different yeah. lane, different ball reaction. Yeah, and the only thing he can think of right now is, that just happened to me? Watch this. He's going to leave the 4-9, and all of a sudden, <laughs> he trips both of them out. That, that's a very unusual hit. A lot of times, you just see the, the four pin tripping out, and sometimes you get lucky to trip the four into the nine. But that time, luck was on Steve Wilson's side. Now Barnes looks for a double. Seventh frame. A bit high, late hit. Oh! And down she goes, number four. Can you believe it? Hey, that's right. Are you kidding me? Steve Wilson just got a nice break, and that was a huge break for Chris Barnes. One more strike. He can stay uh, within probably. one pin. Tight match. Eighth frame, Barnes looks for the turkey here. That's right. We'will have it. Great champions take advantage of good breaks, and that's what Chris Barnes just did right there. They get one once in a while. Chris injured his back. As we take a look at this strike. Yeah, that's right. That all happened filming a TV commercial out in California. We had a bowl on a sidewalk as part of the promotion. Back to Wilson. Late help on number seven. Chris feeling better, so is Steve Wilson. The ESPN's coverage of the Denny's PBA Tour rolls on. Note the start time, special time, 5 Eastern, the Bear Atlanta Classic, as the greatest bowlers in the world descend on Brunswick Zone, Norcross near Atlanta for a piece of the $232,000 first place prize plus a one year tour exemption. It's Super Sunday. Five bagger, nice frame. Crossing over. Leaves two. Yeah, and he just let Chris Barnes just let it go, just let it go. Right in the match. If Steve Wilson would have struck out, there would have been nothing Chris Barnes could have done about it because he would have been in the 270s. The best Chris Barnes can shoot is 260. Well, now with a spare here and three strikes in the tenth frame, Steve Wilson's going to shoot 257. Chris Barnes can throw strikes in the ninth, tenth, and eleventh to shoot 260. Now, what kind of move does Chris Barnes make on this right lane? He was, he's been high the last two shots. Look for an adjustment right here, Dave. In his victories, 237 plus. Haven't been a lot of losses, but it's a much smaller number. He's way over that here in this semifinal. Foundation frame, looks for a four back. Didn't like it. A lot of thinking going on in that coconut right there. It's a shot clock violation. $100 for the first offense, 500 for every offense after that. Chris Barnes needs to shut off the computer and put it on autopilot. It's in high. What's the same on this lane? Steve Wilson had a moment ago. Yeah, and he let Steve back in now. So wow. this is seesawing back and forth. Uh, it's just going to boil down to what happens here in the 10th frame. But right now, Chris Barnes needs to make this. Strike out in the 10th frame, he'll shoot 246. Steve Wilson can go strike spare for 247. Has a 36, takes care of the mark. His son's Ryan and Troy, three years old, watching back home. His wife Linda in Dallas. He told us today that the boys are finally old enough to get the phone and say, Daddy's going to be on TV. Good luck, Daddy. And we're watching now, as is Steve Wilson's family near West Palm, Florida. 
Must strike here for Chris Barnes. He just lost the right lane. You know, through three shots. The last three shots in that right lane were all high. He made an adjustment, thought it was a good shot the last time he was there, went high again. But right now, two more strikes for Steve Wilson. It's a strike spare in the 10th. Anything less, we could have a tie or Chris Barnes moves on. But it won't happen unless he throws two more right here. Dramatic storylines with each bowler today. Barnes coming back from the injury. Wilson thinking about retiring unless he wins. This is pressure. <laughs> ten pin. Huge. Ring and ten there. Now Steve Wilson just needs any kind of a mark. More entry angle? Yeah, that's great. Thanks. Takes care of his mark, but as Randy mentioned, he needed a strike out there to put more pressure on Steve Wilson. Just a mark now for Steve Wilson, and think of this remarkable story. A bowler who earlier this year was convinced he was done. Or to be home with his family. Leave the tour at 37 years old. Now Mark, he's off to the final. Puts him a step closer to exempt status for next year. Right there. Whoa. Wow. Almost had a dangerous split with a five and the seven. Just the Very seven good. pin now. Whoa. Well. Take your spare ball out, go over there and make the seven pin, keep the ball on the lane. And Steve Wilson's going to bowl for the title and figure out what kind of adjustments you will need to make when you bowl for the title. There's a seven. And there's a winner. Needs Just one pin. Keep it on the lane for one pin and he'll have it. This is a guy, Randy, who's not been on TV since November 2nd of 2003. He lost the title match in Grand Rapids, Michigan to Jason Couch by 10 pins. 46 events without a TV show. 74 events without a title. There you go. With that strike, he is off to the championship match. The TV struggles for Chris Barnes, overcoming the back problems, continue. Everyone happy back home at Lake Worth Bowl, that's for sure. They're celebrating now because Steve Wilson is off to the final. Hey, hello, and a special thanks to Goalie Payne, the owner of Lightning Strikes Lanes here in Trustville, Alabama, near Birmingham. She and her staff doing a fabulous job. What a great VIP area for the players. Quite a spread last night, I saw. Yes, indeed. A second semifinal is coming up, and talk about two heavyweights. Big stars in the Denny's PBA Tour, Patrick Allen, last year's Chris Schenkel Award winner as Player of the Year against BB Brian Voss, who bids for a 24th career title already, a PBA Hall of Famer. That's on the way. Steve Wilson takes on the winner of that one. Speaking of Steve Wilson, Randy, he's the subject of this week's Dexter approach, having to do with his very fast feet. Yeah, all about fast feet. Remember, some of the greatest players over the years have all had fast feet. Marshall Holman, Mark Roth. And you see how he gets his feet moving by getting the ball into the swing early. Watch the cadence. One, two, three, four, five. Something you all should try at home. Try to get your footwork to go. One, two, three, four, five. Steve Wilson, who's into the final. Subject of this week's Dexter approach. This week in PBA history, Bob and Oi completing the fifth perfect game on TV. There have been 16, of course, but not one since Mika did it a couple years ago in Connecticut. Parker Bowen III winning in Brentwood, and Walter Ray Williams Jr. won his first Masters title, sixth major. That was his last major championship. We have not seen Walter Ray on TV all year long. Let's flash back to January 23rd, 1988, and that great moment with Bob Benoit. Bob Benoit being tested. I think the test is over. He's proven that he has the medal to be a professional bowler. Now let's see if he can have bowling immortality. He's got 10 in a row. Oh! He has 11 in a row. And Sue
Susan. Oh, the pressure on this sweet blonde. Tears in her eyes. And if this doesn't get your heart pumping, I doubt if there's much that will. <laughs> One to go for 100,000 smackers. Semi-final number two, we have a dream matchup. Lefty superstar Patrick Allen against BB oh, Ryan Moss. That's right, he has got 23 titles going for 24 today for the PBA Hall of Famers. Steve Wilson got by Chris Barnes. Wilson looking for his first title in many years, won by 10 pins. Let's go now to the second semifinalist. They're ready with Randy Peterson. Thanks, David. PA, we'll start with you first. In December in Harrisburg, you take out 51-year-old Tom Baker, and today you bowl against 47-year-old Brian Voss. What's up with you beating up on the old guys? Well, I haven't beat up on Brian Voss yet. I mean, he's made, he's won more tiles than I've made shows, so we got a long work. We got a, a lot of work to do now, still. Okay, Pat. Thanks. BV, 47 years of age, 24th year on tour. How are you able to stay motivated week in and week out? Well, I, I love what I'm doing. It's, uh, it's hard work. I, I thrive on uh, winning. I haven't won. Uh, you know, it's been a while since I won. Actually, it's been a while since I made TV. It's uh, really nice to be back. I hope I do this forever. Thanks, Brian. Okay. Hall of Famer Brian Voss taking on the reigning PBA Player of the Year, Dave. Great matchup. Voss is boss. 24 years on tour now and 82 TV appearances. Fourth all-time in career earnings. To finish up Brian's point, last time he was on TV, Ypsilanti, Michigan, the Eastern Michigan University Convocation Center. World Championships, lost to Chris Lowshatter in the event Sorry, eventually man. won by Patrick Allen, which was his first there. major title and was the springboard to PA winning player of the year. Last title for Brian Voss, Orange County last season. Relax. Over Mike Machug in the finals. PA bids for his second title this season. I'll make up for it there. Come on, Alabama. A little fireworks early from Patrick Allen. I'm impressed. Uh, you know, maybe that helps him get uh, some of the butterflies out. Kind of hooping it up early, but this guy, Brian Voss, has been around for a long time and has been great for many, many years. Eighth on the all-time Denny's PBA Tour title list with 23. Don Johnson, Dick Weber are next. 26 titles. No help on number four. Wiggles but stands. He had a little bit of that Chris Barnes reaction on this lane where a little bit too much back end down the lane. So to compensate for that, he either needs to move in a little bit or needs to throw it faster. Leading us to our Ace Hardware matchup, second semifinal today, PABB. Brian Voss, the veteran, taking on one of the hottest players on tour right now. You can see how many titles that BB has, almost as many titles as he's been out on tour years-wise, and all the money that BB has made. Patrick Allen closing in on a million dollars. in high, he knew through the nose that ball was bound. As we saw that note was a moment ago. Very good season last year, but first TV appearance of this season. And this is just a bad shot. I mean, he pulls this all the way, and even though the lane conditions were fairly forgiving this week, you can't pull it that far and expect it to lay there and hit the pocket. 3-6, spare conversion attempt. Multi-pin numbers okay. Has both down there. Now, for Brian Voss at 47 years old, Randy, I'm intrigued to hear your response to this. You're in your 40s as well. Brian told us last night, not as easy to get ready for tournaments as it once was when he was younger. Yeah, and you have to ask yourself, how much, how much longer can he compete at this level? And I can tell you from experience that, you know, your body just doesn't feel the same as it did 10 years ago. The joint stiffness, all of the wear and tear, all the miles that we put on our bodies going through uh, the rigors of the Denny's PBA Tour. It's been brutal. 
Blitzing the rack there is Patrick Allen from Terrytown, New York, 35 years old, who has six titles. We see his road to TV, Mika Koivunemi. That was a five-gamer that had a roll-off, too, early in that match. And he was way down, Jeff Zafino. 0-3 came all the way back. In fact, PA said after some early qualifying troubles in the round of 64, he was bowling so poorly he had no business being even in the round of 32. Yeah, well, something happened. The second uh, block of qualifying where PA went from being like 30 over to shooting like 380 or 90 over. I mean, he just barely qualified, but uh, he, he he averaged almost 250 the second seven games. 10 pin stands for Patrick Allen. He told us last night he has done his best to downplay winning the Player of the Year award last year because, let's face it, as he says, there's a bullseye on his back now. Everyone's shooting for him. <laughs> I mean, you know, look, what he did last season, you can't, you'll never be able to take that away from him. Nobody will. And, and I think he needs to, uh, I think he does try to downplay that a little more than he should. But that's, that's PA. And, you know, right now, PA is quietly having a great season. And if he were to win today, Dave, I, I think he's, he's your front runner for player of the year. And then, and then everything would then rest on who did what in the three upcoming majors. Big part of our season all coming up. Three majors to go. U.S. Open, Denny's World Championship, Indianapolis, and the season-ending Dexter Tournament of Champions. Yeah, look what Brian Voss did to Parker Bone the third, who uh, absolutely both fantastic this week, and Wes Malott, who's again on the top of the Denny's PBA point list. All 10 down for Brian Voss, who at 47 years old, one of the older players, a regular exempt member. Tom Baker, the oldest. You mentioned Tom's name in the interview with... Patrick Gallen knocked him off in Mechanicsburg. Tom was 51. And while on the subject of older bowlers, the PBA announced the 2006 Senior Tour schedule this week. Nine events starting April 22nd in Manassas, Virginia. The big highlight, Senior U.S. Open, Sun Coast Center in Las Vegas. Coming up in June. Ross leads by 11. It's spun in a bit high and a four pin. Well, this is a better shot that he threw on this lane, but doesn't look like he's lined up right. That ball going high. You know, when you throw it good and the ball goes high like that, it's just a slight adjustment, maybe left with his feet. But what's disturbing is the fact that he wasn't real lined up going into the start of the match. Takes care of the four pin, as he told you in the interview, told us last night when we met with him. The motivation now is to get back in the limelight, be back on TV. And at some point, try to become player of the year again. That's not easy. PBA.com, your best source for all the latest PBA news, stats, player features, fan polls. In this week's poll, we asked who you thought had the best chance at winning the Jackson Hewitt Million Dollar Challenge for winning the remaining three majors. The top four vote getters are right there. Norm Duke, who's made four shows, hasn't won yet, though. Tommy Jones has won twice. Walter Ray Williams Jr., no TV for him yet this year. Pete Weber has a win in Hammond, Indiana. And the others, are you in the others category? <laughs> yeah. 10.08%. <laughs> Interesting poll run this week. Our title sponsor, Jackson Hewitt Tax Service, the million-dollar challenge for any bowler who can win the last three majors. What excitement that will bring if it happens. Double wood. I want you to watch this and watch this ball actually bounce a couple of times when it hits the lane and see what happens is that delays roll and that's why that ball went light. And Pini goes solid 10 pin in third frame and he I mean he could have really gotten on top of Brian Voss early. Instead with a spare here this is a nine pin match. Double wood. Three nine. Down the go. And things are close, as was the case in the first semifinal. We mentioned a couple times Walter Ray Williams Jr. not on TV this year. He's 17th. That certainly makes him exempt for next season. The high finish was just outside the show. Round of eight this year. It's been 18 events since he's been on TV. 30 since he won. That was last year in Cleveland. And that is the longest drought since 01. He's still one win shy of tying Earl Anthony's all-time 
tour victory record of 41. Stop. Wow. Look out. Almost had the big four. Six, seven, ten up. How does it go about this? Uh, he's got to get the ball left of the uh, six pin and slide it on over. Get six, oh, get the ball over into here. Throw the six into the seven. The ball will take out the ten. But I'm I'm a little confused as to how PA went through the went through the nose on that lane. Spang across the deck just misses the seven. He went light on the right lane, and he comes back and either throws it a little too slow or grabs too much of it, I want it. and goes right through the face. And it's exactly what a guy like Brian Voss needs, somebody hanging around give him, to give him an opening to let him back in this match, and that's exactly what just happened. All the experience in the world, 592 career events competed in for Brian Voss. Can he take advantage of the big opening? Yes, he can. The leader in that category, Tom Baker, at 753. The events competed in. So BV trying to use that great experience to his advantage today. You let a guy hang around enough, and you know Brian Voster is trying to sh shake some of the cobwebs off, and and you know kind of catch his breath and and get his nerves and his emotions intact find a way to get the ball to the pocket, get lined up, and then just start making good shots, and that's exactly what's happening. Double here, puts him up 15 pins. Sixth frame. Oh, my! Oh, finally, that's the first one! Of them. <laughs> one second, it looked like a 7-10. The next, all 10 were down for Brian Voss, the Hall of Famer. Maybe luck is in on side today. He's got a lead on Patrick Allen, the defending champ here in Trustville, Alabama. Don't go away, more to come. The Jackson U Attack Service Classic on ESPN is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. Visit GEICO.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. By Ace, the official hardware store of the PBA. Ace, the helpful place. And by Motel 6, the official lodging partner of the PBA. For the lowest price of any national chain, go to motel6.com. We're in Greater Birmingham, Alabama, the heart of Dixie. And Patrick Allen is down to Brian Voss by 15 pins in the second semifinal. Steve Wilson won the first. He'll take on the winner. March to the Denny's World Championship. Here's the points list. Now the top four make the round of Super 16, so they bypass all qualifying at our World Championship location this year in Indianapolis. So it's very big to be in the top four. Patrick Allen, seventh right now, enjoying a great season. Quietly. I mean, if you know, he's not making a whole lot of noise, but four shows, a win. A chance to get another win here. Real solid season after what was a spectacular season last last. Well, you know what I mean. Last year, even though it runs into two years, it's kind of confusing for me. I followed you. Thanks, Dave. Back to PA. <laughs> Not the perfect shot, but all 10 down for him. He does have the four shows. The Japan Cup, Denver, Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, where he won. And now here in Birmingham. So he, Wes Malott, Norm Duke have four shows each. Wes does have a win. That was in Denver. Norm has not won yet. So all are in that ever-growing hat, throwing their name in for Player of the Year honors. A lot yet to happen with three majors still to come. But it's wide open this year. Norm Duke second on the point list, no wins. Tommy Jones right behind that. And third, Mike Scroggins won the first major. And fourth, Jason Couch. Not yet, Oss! Not yet! Jason Couch in fifth with his two wins. And Patrick Allen says, this isn't over yet, my friend, Mr. Hall of Famer. Other names, bottom of your screen. Round of 32 on, there's Pete Weber. Eighth this week, did make the round of eight. Tommy Jones had an incredible start. We've not seen him on TV since Hammond, Indiana. Where he had his long TV win streak snapped. Walter Ray, 17th this week. 
Oh! Wow. Somehow, I don't think Voss is Irish, but I think he's got some of that luck going for him. That was, that was ugly. He'll take it, though, for the turkey. Come on, come on. Frames five, six, and seven. That's a 15-pin lead. He's caught every break in the book this game, and he must take advantage of it. Eighth frame. Yeah! Lush strike on the money for Brian Voss. We like to call this the high hard one. Watch this. It's really fast and it's high flush. And that gives Brian Voss a four bagger. The 25 pin lead. The eighth frame. Brian Voss admitted to us last night. First time I've ever heard BV say this publicly. He's thinking about the end of his career. At 47, he admits he's not where he once was as a great young bowler. But folks today, he's still competing like a champion. Yeah, and you know, that mindset, mindset may change if he wins today, Dave. Wow. Strange ball reaction at the end of the 35-foot oil pattern. Ends up in absolute disaster this late in the match for Patrick Allen. Watch how much this ball hooks down the lane. Just an incredible amount of back end right there. Ball left of the four pin, slotted over in the 10. Again, comes awfully close behind the 10 pin, but it's an open frame. He had one in the fifth, now again in the eighth frame, and that pretty much spells complete disaster. The lead balloons to 40 pins for Brian Voss. Well, certainly not PA's best day, but you know what, he'll be back. And I, and I think that he'll look back on this and say, you know what, I probably made the wrong ball choice. Judging by the back end reaction, that bowling ball that, that he's throwing, it looked like it was just too sensitive. If he got a little bit too aggressive at release point, the ball would overhook. That's why as the lanes break down, the TV lights, oil transitions, the change, this is the second match. And from when they practiced before the show started here, they're allowed some time on the TV pair. Those lanes are drastically different. Yeah, and the tough thing about our sport, Dave, is you can't see the oil on the lanes. All the lanes look the same everywhere you go. You can't see the oil move around. You got to let your ball be your guide. But, you know, the one thing about oil conditions, our oil patterns and, and lane conditions, is they determine everything from how high or how low the scores are. They, it determines if the left side's better than the right, if the right's better than the left, if guys that hook it have an advantage, if guys that go straight have an advantage. It's, it's everything that we're about. And conquering those difficult and ever-changing oil patterns. Well, the conqueror today has been Brian Voss in this second semifinal. He has clinched the match. He'll take on Steve Wilson for his 24th career championship. Before this week, his best finish was at the Keystone State Championships, an event won by Patrick Gallant, where Brian Voss finished fifth. The latest in a season. Brian Voss has made a show this deep in since 1995. But for 24 years in a row, Brian Voss has made television. He's entertaining. This one we're going to fast track through, folks, because it is over. The late open for PA. Does it in. We'll do it again someday. Next game. Now Brian Voss edges toward another victory. Representing the old guard on the PBA tour. The bowl of player who was on the verge of leaving the game at about the midway point of our season. Steve Wilson. The pressure on him to try to win. Clinch an exemption for next year. 
Now Brian Voss already is thinking ahead to the final. Brian tells us he's got to stretch a lot more. Takes a lot more vitamins to keep that 47-year-old body in good shape. He works out regularly. Well, now he'll test all of that against Steve Wilson in the final. First, though, our Denny's PBA Tour Skills Challenge. Chris Barnes will compete today against Tommy Jones, and there are some wild shots, folks, coming up. The Flying Eagle is on the way. Turn around there. There he is, Michael Lister, the president and CEO of Jackson Hewitt Tax Service. Great to see Michael aboard again as our title sponsor. Many thanks to he and his great organization. Our final is set to go as Carmen Salvino, who won here in Alabama back in the 60s. It'll be Steve Wilson and Brian Voss. Denny's PBA Tour on the road. Special time for next week's show in Atlanta. Norm Duke returns to defend his title. Bear has been added as the event sponsor for that event. Marks our second consecutive event at Brunswick Zone in Norcross. Then the next week, our second ever PBA event held in the state of West Virginia. The only previous PBA Tour event in that state, 1965, when Emerson Lanes hosted the tour, won by Sam Flanagan. It's all coming up. Be sure to log on to PBA.com for Pro-Ams. Steve Wilson getting ready. We're ready now for the PBA Skills Challenge. It's the Denny's PBA Tour Skills Challenge round of eight matchup. Tommy Jones, Chris Barnes, and for Jones, challenging first shot. Oh, that looks far. Is that too far? About 10 feet too far. <laughs> All right. He's got to go over the chair. At least eight. It's, eight. it's six. airborne. Oh! That's sick. Don't hurt yourself. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. I know you're looking out for me. First shot out of the box. Be the first. Yeah. Feeling the love. Talk about a tough season for Barnes. Overcoming the back injury. Now this. Oh, not close. <laughs> Good thing they moved the camera. I can't believe you leave the camera in. Jones leads. One strike to none. All right, flying eagle. Oh. Everything set for, oh! oh! That hurts, Chris. Let's take another look at the head oh, injury. Not doing that. And now a little Chris Barnes DNA. Keys. Good thing I had a little hair to pat that. Oh. Little jab at Tommy Jones. Feeling the love. Here we go, flying eagle. He's just kidding. How about this shot, Randy? That front pin there, he's gonna throw that across the lane into the 10. The ball will ricochet off of it and make the seven. Trademark of Chris Barnes right here. This shot seems impossible. Oh, no. You better believe it. The Flying Eagle. Oh, no. Perfect. Chris. The Flying Eagle has landed. Get the one in the middle. Jones got a match. Uh -oh. He cannot complete the feat. Oh, this and sucks. we're tied one strike each. You know, First three wins it. Let's try five today. Oh, God. Real tough. Watch your head. Look out. OK. Be careful, Chris, through five chairs. You've got a strike. Can he get it through five chairs? Forget the strike part. Oh. Yes! Oh, this is not good. TJ not exactly optimistic. He's through the five, but doesn't strike. Two well, strikes to one for Barnes. A little too much back end reaction, went through the nose. Pretty good effort, the first go at it there. 7-10, two balls, one hand. Chris Barnes tries to put away Tommy Jones here. Oh, that's awfully nice. He just makes it look easy. Good luck. The best way to complete a 7-10 split on TV, you need two balls. Uh-oh. Oh. You know. I'll go get my ball. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Three straight strikes. Chris Barnes takes care of Tommy Jones. He won the whole thing last year. He's off to the semifinals. Next week, Maybe. Norm Duke, Mika Koibunemi. 
two PBA greats put their skills on display for you. That's coming up next week. Now we're set for the Jackson New Attack Service Classic Championship match. Brian Voss, Steve Wilson. Wilson has it won since February 2002. Voss, since 04, one will emerge a champion when we come back to Alabama. Our Denny's PBA Tour fan base coming out. Strong showing here in Birmingham, Alabama. Steve Wilson, an amazing story. He had not made match play for the top 32 all year. Until this week, only one player still has it. It's Toy Torgerson from Sweden. That leads us to the Geico Championship Recap. Randy? All right, Dave. Semifinal number one, Steve Wilson. You'll see a beautiful strike here in the eighth frame as he gets by Chris Barnes by the score of 246 to 236. And in semifinal number two, right here, the eighth frame, big strike. This puts an end to Patrick Allen. He beats Patrick Allen by the score of 258 to 198, setting up a great championship match in the Denny's PBA Tours Jackson Hewitt Tax Service Classic. Can Brian Voss at 47 years old regain his championship form? Or will it be Steve Wilson, who several times this year has been on the verge of just calling it quits, going back to his family near West Palm, Florida? and starting a brand new career, maybe not even bowling. <laughs> Late hit number four, he'll take it gladly. And that's, Off to a good start. Excuse me, Dave, that's the one thing we saw with both of these players when they won their matches, was they, they, they got nice breaks like that. Stevie trips that uh, four pin there, we saw him trip the four nine. In his first match, Brian Boss got some nice breaks. That's what it takes, man, you gotta bowl really, really well, and, doesn't hurt to get some luck either. Ten pin for Brian Voss. Certainly had his share of luck in that first match with Patrick Allen. Brian, so glad to be back on TV. He says that is where the fame and all the money is won on the PBA Tour. Yeah, and he's right. I mean, that, that's where the big bucks are. And winning obviously takes care of a lot of things. I think this match is going to be very interesting because I think that... Steve and Brian Voss are going to be playing right on top of one another, meaning they're going to be using the same line to the pocket. You see where our players qualified, very similar there. High game's pretty close. Eight of the 300 games we had this week, none of our four finalists pulled to 300. You see what they did in match play. Pretty easy run through match play, but it's all about experience. Brian Voss, 23 titles, going up against Steve Wilson, a guy who hasn't been here in a while. A little bit. Oh my, exactly what I talked help. about. He doesn't like it, but he'll certainly take it. Makes no sense. Makes no sense. Will this be a problem, though, as he tries to figure out ball reaction later in this match? That's the question. They got a lot of practice during the commercial break, and, and to come out and, and have a shot look like that is, is, is strange. As Steve Wilson trips the four on that lane, Brian Voss goes light on that lane. February 24th, 2002, his last win. <laughs> Perfect shot. November of 03, last TV appearance as he makes his move. Yeah, he made a big move in, and, and Dave, you alluded to his last win was on a similar pattern. But Steve Wilson has now moved into you know, almost second arrow. He's completely away from uh, where he was in the first game. See their strike percentages. Wilson an advantage. A gutsy move by Steve Wilson, got practice, found something else that looked better. He went with it. Goes for a turkey to start off the championship match. Yeah. We all have it. Steve Wilson told us last night that if he doesn't win here today, there's a good chance he'll stop bowling. He will not go through the tour trials as you did last year for the last couple of years. You know how difficult that is, the 45 games in the top 10 make it. Says this will be it. Brian Voss says, family, friends always ask him, Brian, why haven't you been on TV this year? Why aren't you winning this year? Well, there's pressure. A chance to get back in the winner's circle. Even though it's the third frame, yeah, that, that's a real big strike because 
you know, it, he's only 10 back now, and, and, and if he strikes in the fourth frame, we're all tied up. But if he doesn't strike there, he falls further behind early on, and you don't want to you don't want to get too far behind that early because you feel like you're just you're just fighting an uphill battle. Speaking of an uphill battle, he's had to fight some injury troubles himself this year. <laughs> Perfect adjustment. And all 10 down, 60 feet to success for Brian Voss. One of the things he's been battling is his finish at the foul line because of a bad hip and a bad knee. And you can see it right there, especially when he's throwing it hard, but that one ended up in the right spot, Dave. Tremendous championship match. Randy is underway. Steve Wilson with a turkey to start. Brian Voss, we are all square. It's even from Bama. Jackson here at Tax Service Classic. Trustville, Alabama. Lightning strikes. Bowling center. The champion will be crowned in moments. Brian Voss, the last time he won. And back the last season, December 19th of 04, beat Eugene McCune and then Mike Machug en route to the title. And he told us yesterday how hungry he is to get back into the winner's circle, what it means to him. The desire is there. Steve Wilson is not nearly as outspoken. He is a quiet type. But inside, intense. Looks for the front four. <laughs> Just seven fast down. well he was firm when he was fast. further out now that he's moved in he's got to be careful with his speed looked like he missed it just a little bit at the bottom at the release point and that ball didn't have enough stuff on it to hook up into the pocket the bad news he left himself a pretty tough spare to make because of that back pin and he lost three pins in count four eight Not easy to convert. Can he cover it? Look out. Got it. Good guess. Good guess. Right. So he tells us how close he's been to going home and how close he is to his daughter, Sarah. Another daughter, Emma. Sarah's into tennis and soccer. Wants to be there to watch her games and competitions. She's quite the little athlete. So we're here. Watching today, big birthday party at home. Oh, 10 down for dad there. You know, and I kind of expected that was going to happen after he went light. You see a lot of times players overcompensate. He goes light, gets a little bit too much of this one, and gets very fortunate to trip the four out. But hey, 10 is 10. Brian Voss, however, working on three in a row, can take the lead right here. Up by three, chance for a 13-pin lead, fifth frame. Looks for the four-bagger with his sons, Josh and Cameron, 14 and 13 years old in Atlanta. They're watching today. And see that 10-pin. Well, that looked like a pretty good shot, too. And when a player starts running it out like that, because this is a game of field, that ball left Brian's hand, and Brian felt real good about it right up until it hit the head pin. Will increase his stat on the single pin conversion numbers. Now, Randy, earlier we mentioned last year's victory in Orange County for Brian Voss. Compare his release with today. Well, again, it's all about versatility. This is last year in Orange County. You can see how deep he was. He had his hand position a little bit different. He was hooking ball. Now look how much flatter his hand is at the start, how much faster he gets his body moving, and how much straighter he's going this week. It's all about versatility. Brian Voss is versatile, and that's why he's been able to win out here and stay out on the tour and be competitive for 24 years. Oh, my. This time, the seven-pin stands for BV. Just a bad break, great shot, bad break. Just a stone seven. Watch how the two pin goes up and over the seven pin. 
almost inconceivable. The two pin missed the seven there. But it did, takes care of the single pin conversion. Now just a one pin match. This is close. As Wilson works on a strike, sixth frame. All the way back to the flagship open, 2002. That was in Erie, Pennsylvania. He said to us, he's not sure he can compete on a regular basis with today's PBA players. Doublewood, 0-2-8. That's pretty good right there. Yeah, that ball never hooked in the back part of the lane. So now Steve is faced with a decision on what to do on that right lane. What kind of adjustment will he make? Does he move further right and kind of go right to left with his shot like Brian Voss is doing? Does he go to a different ball that has a little bit more hook down the lane? Here's where you make an educated guess. Adjustments, decision-making, strategy. All critical. Two eight double wood falls for Steve Wilson. Well, he's made two really good spares on that lane, Dave, and uh, two tough ones. You can see his favorite lane is the left lane. Unfortunately, he will finish this match on the right lane. We saw moments ago how long it's been since he's won. We asked him last night, do you have any TV show day superstitions? Steve said, it's been so long since I've been on TV, I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm superstitious about bowling on television. Wow. <laughs> Not anymore, that's changed. Seventh frame. Well, Shrapnel everywhere, four pin. Yeah, he, and he's going high on the left lane and light on the right lane, and uh, what looked really good at the start of the match in terms of the change that he made in angles to the pocket, he's gonna have to change again. And this is not the time you wanna start experimenting and try to figure out how you should play the oil pattern. Down goes number four. Told us last night. The opposite. Nervous, but focused. Well, he'll have to focus on adjustments now as the oil again goes through transition phases. You see the max numbers. Things are tight. <laughs> Big strike, Brian Voss. Looks comfortable on that lane. Oh yeah, he looks comfortable on both lanes. Remember in the sixth frame, he left that stone seven pin. Otherwise, he's in the 220s working on a double. But he's making really good shots right now. And I mean, even when the lane conditions are easy in this situation, television, you have to make good shots. You still have to make good shots. And you know, Brian got away with a lot of stuff in his first match. And right now, I think he's dialed in and making good shots and he's gonna be a handful. Easy, easy. Chance for easy. a 12 pin lead with a strike and some movement to his left. You gotta do that when he's up there. <laughs> and Brian will <laughs> go through the routine again. <sighs> About the last thing you need at this stage of a day in his career, distractions. Boy, he was ready to pull the trigger too. A little momentum coming off the strike on the right lane. But it's all mental now, you just Put that behind you and just go through your pre-shot routine and let it fly. Yeah! Brian Voss is back. Posted that shot pretty good. Yeah! Referring to cutting out the 10 when six goes the wall, cuts the 10 out. That's a bowler's best friend. That's how you know that the ball's entering the pocket the right way instead of going up and around or laying in the gutter kind of dead. Different ball for Steve Wilson. Now he is now making the changes. A frame works on a spare here. No help on number 10. And the messenger drifted and fell a little bit shy. It's Mark. Well, it was a good move. You can see how much more that ball had down the lane, just not enough to get the weak 10 out. 
Stevie's still in it. Spare here. He strikes out in ninth and tenth frame. He shoots 235. Right now, Brian Vossel still only in the 220s. Had a temp in. In my opinion, though, Dave, the only chance Steve Wilson will have to win this tournament is by striking here in the ninth frame. And remember, the last couple of shots have been high. He's going to make another adjustment now. I don't think Brian Voss is going to miss the pocket, especially as straight and direct as, as he's going and as good as he's throwing it and as confident as, confident as he is. Don't look for Brian Voss to give you any help. Disastrous split. Left and lane gun. You can gun. see Brian Voss adding up the numbers quickly. A late split. Maybe the end for Steve Wilson. Yeah, and, and he he totally lost his ball reaction. High, high, high. The last three shots on this lane. And this is going to all but do it for Steve Wilson. Open frame. Damn. In the ninth and foundation, look at the lead up to 27 pins. Looks for a turkey here in his ninth frame. It's all but his. Yeah, a strike here, it's pretty much done, finished. needs to do is keep the ball in the lane and he'll have a win. Well, I said it. He needed to make great shots this game, and he did. He could easily have nine spare, eight bagger. And stay behind the foul line and keep it on the lane. That's enough, baby. He will have his 24th. Career title. Still too shy of Don Johnson and Dick Weber. The great Hall of Famer is back in the winner's circle. Thank you. Brian told us last night, Randy, that his season at this point, before today, disappointing but not disastrous. I imagine after the win today here in Alabama, that evaluation will change. Right, 24 years, 24. That's right. Hi, brother. Thanks, Carmen. Fellas, thank you. Thank our you. VIP section, our sponsors, and the great Carmen Salvino, who won here in 1965. Kind of passing the torch there to Brian Boss as he climbs the ladder of the all-time Dennis PBA Tour champions. Go look at that ring. Brian Boss has his $40,000 and a tour exemption for next year wrapped up and some nice hardware as well to go along with it. What do you think, VB? Does that fit? Real nice. I think it will, too. A champion again, Brian Boss in Alabama. The Jackson Hewitt Tax Service Classic on ESPN is brought to you by Jackson Hewitt Tax Service. This year, let the tax experts at Jackson Hewitt help you get the biggest refund you deserve. By GEICO, 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. Visit GEICO.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. By Ace, the official hardware store of the PBA. Ace, the helpful place. And by Bear, the more you know, the more you trust Bear. At 47 years old, Brian Voss has become the oldest player on this year's Denny's PBA Tour Champions List. Tom Baker, 51, competed in the final in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, but lost to Patrick Allen. Very happy winner is joined now by Randy. Brian, congratulations. Apparently, the old guy still has it. 24 years on tour, 24 wins. Where does this win, win rank? 
Well, you know, I, I, I've, I, I know my math. That's one per year. And, and uh, you know, if I bowl six more years, that means 30 titles. And uh, I, I'm in this for the long haul. I love this game. Uh, I want to thank Jackson Hewitt for, for sponsoring this and also the million dollars that they're providing in the majors. Uh, the Bowling Center, they did a wonderful job here. Uh, elite Bowling, uh, I just, uh, it's a, it's a spe very special moment, very. Brian, how would you best describe your strategy coming into today? Uh, well, prior to this week, I knew the pattern. I went home and I just threw hard. That's all I did. I threw hard for uh, a couple days, and I knew that uh, if I could do that this week, uh, I've had success on this pattern throwing hard, and it was it. Just, just throw hard. If it starts hooking, just throw harder. Brian, congratulations. Dave? Great finish for Brian Voss. As he wins his 24th career Denny's PBA Tour title. The Bear Atlanta Classic, Norcross, Georgia, near Atlanta. Note the special start time on Super Sunday, 5 o'clock Eastern time, as our coverage of the Denny's PBA Tour continues on ESPN. Now for the entire crew, my partner Andy Peterson, it's Dave Ryan saying so long from Trustville, Alabama, near Birmingham. That trophy up, baby. Wow. What a day for Brian Voss. Mm. At 47 years old, he has returned to the elite of the Denny's PBA Tour with a huge victory today. Now big question too, what will happen with Steve Wilson? Will he stay with it? He did not earn his exempt status yet. Winner X is coming up. It's been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Congratulations to Brian Voss, the 2006 Jackson Hewitt Tax Service Classic Champion. His 24th win, ninth all time. BB rules today.